Sasha. And welcome to our studio series. Today we're going to be talking about painting figures in, in landscapes and streetscapes. Yes, but figures that play a supporting role in your painting, as distinct from, say, portraiture yes. or figure painting, where the human form is the object of the painting. We're going to cover some tips and tricks on how to fit people into you, the environment that you've created so it looks natural. Yeah, people often avoid adding figures to their landscapes and streetscapes, um, not through an aesthetic choice, but just because they're intimidated by the challenge. If that sounds like you, stick around. We just might have a cure for that. First off, it is perfectly fine to paint a street scene or a landscape that don't have any people in them. The group of seven have lots of paintings that are completely devoid of the human form. Yeah, sometimes this may be done to emphasize the abstract qualities of the painting, um, or sometimes uh, you might just be wanting to set a mood, like for example, emphasizing the wilderness. But those are aesthetic choices being made by the artist. There is a world of difference between choosing not to include people in your paintings and shying away from including mm -hmm. people because you feel like your drawing skills are not good enough. Or when you do include people, they end up looking like cardboard cutouts sitting on top of the canvas. So what's the cure, Doctor? Well, number one, don't procrastinate. You often see people bringing their painting almost to completion and then trying to add the figures in after. And if you do this, the figures will look like cardboard cutout afterthoughts. Yes, absolutely. So the tip number one is bring your people into your paintings from the beginning. It's good advice to bring all aspects of your painting along together anyway, but particularly true of figures. So that's good. Um, what else do you suggest? Don't paint them. Okay, yeah. Um, I usually start with just a, a silhouette, an approximate silhouette, just a blob really, of roughly where those figures are going to be in, in my landscape or streetscape. And then when I'm doing the background, I will carve into those shapes um, to give me what I'm looking for. I find that by doing that, the, the figures will just integrate better into the painting and, uh, and you usually end up with something that's a bit more elegant as well. Speaking of elegant, one other trick is think small head, long body. Right. We tend to make our figures with their heads too big. If you think about a figure, all the important features are up here. So don't forget, try not to make your heads too big. And it's the opposite when it comes to legs. When you're thinking of your legs, you're normally viewing them in a foreshortened view, and so people come up short in the leg department. <laughs> and if you overdo it, worst case, case scenario is you're going to end up with something that's a little bit too elegant. Exactly. So I think that's tip number three. Um, what else do you got? Okay, overlap your figures. Yes. Think about a photograph of people on the street. There is a jumble of body parts. You can't tell whose head belongs to whose body. When we paint figures, though, we like to tend to space them out evenly like bowling pins. And overlapping them like that is a double win, really, because not only will they look more natural, um, it takes a little bit of pressure off your drawing skills. True. If you paint your figures like soldiers in a parade, the viewer gets to inspect each figure individually, and every anatomical flaw is on display. Jumble them up, however, and you can get away with a lot of drawing imperfections. You can also use lighting to help out with that. You can use lighting to sort of break apart the main form of a figure. Yeah, I will start with a silhouette, and then I'll look at the overall lighting in the painting, and what I'm looking for is the, like the fall of light on a shoulder maybe, um, or the crook of a leg, um, and that helps to knit the form more naturally into their surroundings. It just helps camouflage the figure a little bit more and hides any potential drawing imperfections that might be in there. Okay. What else do we got? Um, too much detail. This is sort of related to the procrastination idea. Um, people start their figures late in the painting, and when they do, they take out the tiny little brushes and get zooming in on detail. You really don't want to treat your figures with any more detail than how you've treated the rest of the painting. Exactly. No eyelashes. Um, okay, I think we're up to number six now. Um, can we come up with any more? Um, how about perspective? Uh, sort of taking a step back, one trick that's really great is keeping those heads um, lined up. Yeah, I think we covered this in an earlier video on, on perspective, um, but for sure, if you're viewing um, at eye level, um, then you should just watch and make sure those heads are more or less at the same level in your painting. I'm going to throw in one more, and it's got to do with tone. 
Um, I think that very often you see people employing more contrast in their figures than is warranted by the lighting in the rest of the painting. Yeah, I think that's a symptom of some of the other tips that we've already covered. Um, you know, people tend to switch modes when yeah. they're painting figures into their landscapes and street scenes. They either paint them way too late in the process, or they paint them with more detail. Other thing they do is they paint them with more saturated colors and more contrast than how they've treated the rest of the painting. Yes, indeed. So the moral of the story is, paint those figures the same way that you paint the rocks and trees or buildings and cars that the figures share the canvas with. And don't be intimidated by the drawing part. As long as the people sort of fit naturally into their environment, the viewer will forgive mm -hmm. those imperfections. Okay, so how many did we come up with? Um, number one. Okay, number one, don't procrastinate. Bring those figures into your painting right away. Number two, use the background to carve into those shapes. Number three, small heads, long legs. And number four, overlap those figures. Easier on your drawing and uh, they will look more natural in their environment. Also, number five, lighting does the same thing. Use lighting to break up those figures and it's also more forgiving. Number six, watch that detail. Don't get more detail with the figures than you've used in the rest of the painting. Uh, number seven, um, perspective, keep those heads lined up. Uh, and number eight, just be careful that you don't use more contrast or more color saturation in the figures than you've used elsewhere in the painting. Think that about covers in. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video. And subscribe to see more videos like this. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye.